Hello, and welcome to the first and exclusive ICQ 6.0 reporting tutorial. The purpose of this video is mainly to show you around the new tool and how to quickly and simply create dashboards thanks to the new functionalities and shortcuts. So let's get started. I'm choosing a shopping cart schema to perform basket analysis. First, let's take a simple serial chart to go through the new wizard. On the left, you now have several tabs. Quickly going through them, you have the general configuration for the box properties, the data definition tab, the data render for setting up appearance items such as coloring, the navigation options, the events you can create, and the hooks where you have the ability to make modifications to the widgets, which is a functionality for very advanced users, similar to the former extra options. You also now have undo and redo buttons below which are quite useful, I must say. Let's first edit the header. On the second tab, you define your graphs data. The great improvement is now the list of your dimensions, measures and events, which you can drag and drop to create a chart. You also now have a run button to test your definition out. If you wish, you may also write your query with the MDX editor available here. Note you can move your dimensions and measures around and add other measures if desired. Let me quickly add the legend on the right hand side for informative purposes. And there you go. You can now see the margin per cart, as well as the catalog price per cart, splitted by each product family. Click on data here on the bottom right hand side to display the data content of your chart. The possibilities are huge and you can create completely new graphs in a few seconds and try them out to see if it's what you're actually looking for. For instance, show the average cart size by product family and by gender. You are also able to select a limit or order on your graphs data. You can select a different order measure than the measure displayed or the same one. Let's change the chart a little bit and go through the appearance. You can quickly change the chart type by selecting another one from the list. Change the color mode here. And the balloon format is what you see when passing your mouse on the graph. You can change its format with other predefined ones here or add it your own. Note you now have completion, or you can also select functions from the list. And there you go. You now see the personalized bullet. Another quick change you can make is the minimum and maximum values on your axis by entering them here. Add the scroll bar by simply clicking on this button. You may disable it by re-clicking on the same button or clicking on the D button, which goes back to the default setting. Moving on to navigation, let's enable a user select strategy and choose all on the filter and for render to see details of the drill through. Save, and now you can navigate through your data. Let's add a filter. Easily add the filter members this way. You can add the default member and maybe enter a preselection. As we've chosen weekdays as members, let's choose Monday as a preselection. Edit the header the same way as before. For the appearance, you can change the type from the list here 
and select if you want a multi or single selection mode. For advanced styling, click on the configuration button where you can change coloring among other properties. In order for the filter to work on your dashboard, you can add it one by one to each chart or add to all charts on the report by clicking here. Now let's add a pivot table. As we are analyzing shopping data, let's add on rows the shopping hours and on columns the age group. By the way, this is how you manually add an event to your chart. In our case, the weekdays event. Click on non-empty to delete columns without data. Now, what is very interesting as a new feature is the fact that you can conditionally color a table according to another measure than the one you are displaying. To do so, first add a second measure and then, on Appearance, select the measure to display and down here on Cell Background Color, click on Palette for Values to create a table heat map according to the other measure. And there you go. You may add the transparency by changing the alpha. If you now inverse the measures, you are able to see the average card size data and the coloring according to the number of customers. Last but not least, let's make two charts interact. The objective is to make another chart react when clicking on a cell from this table. Create an event here, save, and then on the other charts, the event will appear in suggestions. Edit the header with the event name to show what you've clicked on. And there you have it. You can now activate the snapshot layout and navigate through your dashboard. Of course, there are so many other features available and I invite you to play with this new reporting to create all desired dashboards. Hope you enjoyed this first ICQ 6.0 tutorial and see you next time.